Uh, so as I was saying before, uh, my camera battery died. Um, yeah, I'm doing the permaculture bike park thing and, and trying to figure out what works and, and what doesn't and uh, I had to do this because uh, kind of part of my dream is to um, go do this elsewhere. There's all kinds of bike parks which are starting to pop up in cities which is really cool. Um, I think bicycling is a really healthy activity for kids to be doing so I think we should support that. So. Anyway, it's really cool that the uh, cities are starting to build bike parks, and there's some really good ones starting to be built. But, um, with these bike parks, whether it be ones that, you know, uh, riders have built themselves, or ones that cities have built, um, usually when it's done, it just, it's just all bare dirt, basically. You know, the excavator comes in, rips it all up, kind of like I'm doing here. And, um, or the guys just dig up all the soil, because they're digging what's close. Um, and they just end up with a lot of dirt and not many plants left and so I want to learn how to apply permaculture to this to building these bike parks and uh, learn how to heal the land again after we put in all the all the fun riding features um, and grow food and 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 show people that we can kind of rehabilitate these damaged landscapes be they a uh, bike park or you know a field or an old farm or whatever it is um, as as humans, we got the tools and the knowledge and the and the uh, ability to really help nature thrive. And so that's what I'm trying to do here. That's, that's kind of overall vision. Well, this is what I got so far. Um, move this dirt in here to kind of make a little short tabletop step up thing for the kitty line, and then the uh, big jump will come from that kind of torn apart lip over there. Um, and I put some dirt on top of the rocks here, so actually pack this landing down but uh, I got the bigger line going over there and then this be the little kitty pack over here but I'm running into the same thing I was running in with my house it's just excavator just won't get through this clay um, so it's not exactly what I was thinking would happen but uh, or I was hoping to happen but it looks like I'm gonna have to do a lot of this uh, digging by hand, do it the old fashioned way, which is all right. Hopefully I can get some help next year and we can get all these jumps shaped up and rideable. But uh, just continuing along with the excavator. Um, what I got here is I cut this out so that the water that comes uh, off the road, there's another water bar that, that brings water into this kind of terraced area here. Um, I'm gonna cut that through here so the water can take this path. I'm trying to get that water to snake across the land. Um, you want to move water across your land um, as much as possible, not, not just uh, drop it out the bottom. So this will come this way, water that berm. Um, all the water up these jumps will go over here as well. And this will keep going down. Um, I'm kind of figuring out where all these are going to be as I go. This deer just came strolling through my excavation site. She doesn't seem to care. She likes the, uh, looks like the ponderosa I cut down. It's eating on the bark and the needles. Hey, good morning. Um, had a pretty long day yesterday. Um, we went out to Mike Ailey's place in Bonner's Ferry. We left at like, well, we got up at like 6 and messed with Steve's trailer for a while until we finally got the lights to work. And then went out there. We didn't get back until like 2 in the morning. It was a long day, but I um, uh, got the word from Mike's niece, Alex, who's uh, kind of in charge of the estate now, that um, they're getting ready to sell the land. and so. We had an opportunity to go out there and grab the rest of uh, a bunch of windows and stove pipe you see behind me. Um, basically stuff that Mike had been gathering for years and years um, for the eventual community who wanted to have started there. They were going to need stoves, they were going to need windows, or they wanted to build a bunch of different stuff. So um, It's kind of hard for me to go out there now. A lot of memories there and it's kind of sad to see all that land just go into who knows what now. But uh, I think Mike would be happy that all this stuff is going to help us build our community here. Um, we got a few stoves, which is really cool, so 
Um, we've all got heat for the winter, which is good, stove pipe, and a lot of windows to uh, to build future structures with, or, or the ones that Janet and Steve are building now. And uh, some tools and just various stuff, you know, he was collecting stuff for home for homesteading for 40 years. So. Um, there's some good stuff left over long for <laughs> a lot of junk. But uh, it was it was a good trip. I'm happy we went out there. It's definitely worth the drive. I'm pretty tired today. But um, I'm going to try to get this stuff unloaded. Um, as soon as some other people show up. I don't know where everybody went. <laughs> but uh, then um, I might just do some uh, excavating in the meantime. Um, build a little bit more on the on the permaculture bike park. And then uh, I'm going to get ready to uh, just start cleaning up here. And, and i got to get out to California in a few days. So I'm getting ready to close it up here. So uh, Sean was over here helping me unload all these uh, windows here. They're mostly sliding glass doors. But a little bit of a mishap with one or two of them. So we got a ton of this stuff I gotta clean out of my bed now. Uh, put it all in this bin. Um, does anybody know any good uses for this? I got a lot of it. So I got the tractor up here today. Uh, Janet was using it. So I'm gonna make use of the time that's here by moving my uh, little platform here to a better location. I'm going to show you a little bit how we do this. Um, this chain right here is not quite long enough to reach the hooks on the bucket here. Um, I would attach it to the just the trailer hitch of the tractor, but um, we've got the back plate on there and it's too much trouble to take that off. So I just found another chain that uh, somebody sent us ants and hooked that through this one and to both of those and just have to back it up through that little space over there, so let's see how it goes. Well, it took some doing, uh, maneuvering around everything. I got caught on my, my mill up there, sort of had to use a pry bar to move the move the skids over a bit, but I got it uh, in the spot I want it for now. Um, at least until I figure out where else to put it, but I'm not going to be doing any work down here um, for the rest of the year, so it's out of the way. I can get to more excavating and stuff up there, and uh, yeah, it's it's pretty easy to move these things around, especially if I didn't have this drag bar on the back here, it would have been a whole lot easier because you got to watch out for that the whole time you're backing up. You got to back up. I could do this forward if I could just use a hitch, but uh, got it done. And this even works when there's if there's too much weight, you don't want to move it around, but a little bit of weight on there, it'll still move. But uh, one good thing about having the back blade on here is I can use it to smooth out. This part of my road that I just uh, tore up with the excavator. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick, and then I'll be done with the do the, uh, then I'll be done with the tractor for today. Good morning. Um, so I decided I need to move my whole kitchen area and storage area over there. Um, I'm trying to get this place cleaned up and ready and stored stored up for winter. And uh, the tarp over there is leaking. It's old. It's been in the sun too long, and uh, really living under the tarp is. Or cooking under tarps not very nice so I've got this thing I decided I'm just gonna go ahead and put a roof on it and um, for the winter I can close in the walls with tarps but I think I might leave it open and make a little outdoor kitchen like I always planned to um, I've got a bunch of mill cutoffs and some extra boards from the house project so it should be pretty easy um, if I got the materials um, so I put a, a board across there to support the back side of the roof. I'm going to cut those off and then uh, I trim these up to the right height. So it's about seven feet in the back and eight feet in the front. And I'm going to put a sort of like a sod roof, but it's going to be like a mulch roof. So let's put a liner up there and throw a bunch of mulch on top of it. Tree boughs and leaves and sticks and stuff. So it'll look uh, kind of like a living roof. But anyway, I wanted to put this nice beam on top um, to support this front span. I wanted to set it right on top of these posts. So I have this, uh, or the ants have this 
adjustable auger bit and brace and so I just drilled some holes in here and that should slip right on top of there. Adjusted it to be just a little bit bigger than the size of these posts and uh, should hold it on really well. See how it goes. So this is what I got done uh, so far today. Um, finished pushing, putting up the roof poles and the supports. Um, I had to move these 2x6s around um, to match the width of the pallets. Uh, once I got the pallets up there, I figured I need something to screw them into. So I actually took the double off the middle one and made these doubles over here so that the pallets can have a seam and be real well supported. And I put these uh, angle braces in here so now it's Nice and sturdy. Um, yeah, so I just gotta go to town now and get more pallets in Missoula. I think seven more. And um, have a roof over it. Get some tarps, uh, put some, do some stuff around the edge to, to hide the pallets. And uh, I'll have a nice dry space to build a little kitchen in and store, store my stuff for the winter and into next year. All right, it's uh, another day in the ant village. Uh, I'm gonna continue working on this uh, little shed project so I can get all my stuff stored up and make my way out of here. Um, I went to Missoula last night. I got some more pallets for the roof. I uh, made sure they had the uh, heat treating mark on them so I know they're not treated with any weird stuff. Um, here it is up here, you can see on these. That mark right there means it's heat treated here. Um, HT, there you can see it better right there. Um, same as the, right here, the same as the lumber that we get, so I know it's just straight wood. Um, but yeah, I got those, I'm going to put them, rest of those on the roof and trim it off and try to get this finished today. Um, and I got some other, some other lumber I bought, this stuff here, the tongue and groove, um, to use as a, kind of a countertop, so I'm going to build a little kitchen in here. I have another sink up there that I bought last year. I'm going to sink that in and um, make a nice usable space. So I finished putting the uh, pallets up on the roof. So that's how big the roof is going to be. Uh, I'll get a nice, I don't know, maybe foot overhang, foot and a half um, in front of the skids here and just over the skids on the back side here. But uh, now i got to put some trim around the outsides and uh, get the tarp tarped up there. Um, I screwed all these into the rafters, uh, all the pallets, and then I also screwed the pallets together to make them a little stronger. So I don't think it's going to be a super strong roof. I wouldn't probably climb around up there, but um, it is lightweight, which is good for this application, being that it's a movable structure. So I just uh, covered the whole roof in just one layer of cardboard. I got some big bike boxes work really well but uh this isn't for insulation like on my house it's kind of just to plug up these gaps um, to support the tarp so it doesn't stretch and break in those gaps um, theoretically they should the cardboard should stay dry because it's going to be under the tarps but uh, it will be exposed to the air but it's dry so it's kind of an experiment see how long it lasts and, um, See what I can do in making use of recycled materials. Okay, so there it is. I got uh, two layers of the six mil clear plastic on there, and then I just put another one of these uh, billboard tarps over it just to protect the good tarps uh, from the mulch that I'm going to put up there. But I got it all trimmed off around, stapled down uh, on the back side here. You can see I attached a two by six. To the back of the pallets here and wrap the plastic up underneath that. I don't know if you can see that. Um, so that way it has a drip edge because the water is going to come down this surface here and it's going to want to wrap up over there so it needs something to drip off of. Um, so that'll make it drip off the back there. I think eventually I might even try to put a gutter back here and collect water off the roof. See how that works uh, filtering through the mulch there. But that's it for today. Um, it's feast night down there at base camp.
So I'm going to go take a shower and have some food with everybody. And then uh, tomorrow I'll be back and uh, put some trim around the edge of this so you can't see any of the tarps or the pallets. And uh, put some mulch up there. It'll be all done. Hey, so it's uh, another day uh, here in my plot. I did a bit of excavating for uh, Steve over there this morning to help him out with his drainage on his uh, house since I'm done with the excavator now, for, for now. Um, but I did some more work on my my shack here. Um, I had these trim pieces that uh, the neighbor, Tom, um, he had some stuff milled up for him and these are kind of the off cuts. So that's one of the bigger ones up there. I think it looks kind of cool. So that just covers up the tarps and the sides of the pallets. And then I got one on the back here. Um, screwed that onto these boards and left like a two inch gap in there. So that this will hopefully hold the hold the mulch that's up there and keep it from sliding off, but allow the water to drip through. Um, and then maybe later I can put a gutter on that or something. But I think it's all good for now. Um, I think I'm just going to throw a bunch of mulch up there, get it covered to protect those tarps, and um, start moving all my stuff in here and getting ready to, to pack up and get on the road. So there it is. Uh, I got the roof covered in a good thick layer of boughs. Hopefully that'll block out uh, the light from the tarps to keep them from degrading. Of course this is all going to dry up pretty quick and uh, let more light through. So you can always just add more mulch. I might even like shake off all the, shake the sticks off and get all the needles off of them and then put fresh sticks up there. But hey eventually it might even like compost and turn into a living roof on its own. But this works for right now. It's nice and lightweight too. Down off of here. And it kind of blends into the forest a little better. Minus the tarp on the ground, of course. But yeah, now I've got a dry space to store my stuff. Um, and in the future I'm going to build a kitchen in there um, so I have a nice easy place to cook keep everything up off the ground. Well, not a whole lot to uh, report today. Um, I basically spent the whole day cleaning up around my plot, um, getting things organized, taking pretty much everything out of my tarp over there except for my, my toolboxes. Too heavy to move right now. But I got everything stored up in my uh, shelter over there and organized. And I got my truck loaded up because um, I'm heading out to California. Um, and I'm going to do some work and see some family and um, go to a gathering out there. I'm actually going to be teaching um, some per permaculture stuff there. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Um, doesn't look like the Ant Village Challenge is going to happen this year again. If it does, I might be back here much sooner. If not, it might be a little while. I don't, don't really know right now. But uh, you can make a good break. Go make some money. Let my house back there do whatever settling it's going to do since I just put a bunch of weight on it with all that dirt. Um, that way I'm not dealing with that, those issues when I'm installing windows and doing cob walls and things like that. So I think that'll be a little advantageous. Um, so yeah, that's it for this video and it's probably not going to be any more Ant Village specific videos for a little while, um, but I do make videos of them on the road. So there'll be other, lots of other permaculture stuff coming in. It might slow down for a little bit while I go work, but uh, I'll be making more. So uh, if you like what I'm doing, as always, go to patreon.com slash jessegrimes and become a patron. And uh, follow me on Instagram at oneheartfire. Or at oneheartfire. Um, you can also check out oneheartfire.org. That's where um, I got my old blog and a bunch of resources if you want to learn more about permaculture and what, what we're doing out here. So... Uh, Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.